Pabstead presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Makers of Pabstead present each week at this time Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, do you housewives find it difficult sometimes to get meals in a hurry these busy days? Yes, and make them as tempting and nutritious as your hard-working family deserves? Well, that problem is much simpler if you have a package or two of Pabstet on hand. Because Pabstet is the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. Pabstet spreads easily to make tasty, appetite-satisfying sandwiches. It slices neatly to serve with apple pie or fruit. It's easy to make smooth cheese sauces with Pabstet to pour over hot vegetables and other foods. Yes, and there are any number of main dinner dishes you can make in a jiffy... Why, in no time at all, you'll discover a hundred or more ways to give tempting variety to everyday meals with Papstead. So keep Papstead on hand. Remember, it's easy to digest. A fine energy food that's wholesome and nourishing. Yes, ask your grocer tomorrow for Papstead in the distinctive round, flat package. Remember, it's Papstead. P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. The delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. And now let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who's brushing up on his golf game in preparation for the finals of the annual Labor Day tournament at the Summerfield Country Club. On the eve of the great event, we find him in his living room behind the sofa, addressing the ball with a mashie. This is a very difficult shot. Excuse me. It, quiet, Bertie. Never talk to anybody when they're making a golf shot. Yes, excuse me. Yeah, now watch this. If you ever get in a trap, Bertie, there's just one thing to remember. Oh, I keep out of traps. Yes. The thing is, you want to get under the ball and give it plenty of backspin. Now watch this. This is what we call a chip shot. You. <laughs> chip shot, huh? What do we do with the chips? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What's Miss Marjorie going to say when she sees what's happened to her face? Well, those things shouldn't be left lying around on mantles. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know something that'll look a lot better up there anyway. What's that? A nice big silver cup with my name on it. Oh, yes, yeah, so that would go good. Oh, by the way, Mr. Gilsey, Miss Marjorie said to tell you we're putting you in the sewing room tonight. It's the sewing room? Why? What have I done? She said she's going to put Mr. Ferris in your room. Who's Mr. Ferris? I don't know, but he's a gentleman who's going to sleep in your room. Where am I expected to sleep? On the floor? Oh, no. You're going to have Leroy's camp car. The one that folds up. It folds up. <laughs> Suppose you get the broom and uh, sweep up these uh, divots, Bertie. How soon is dinner? I'm starving. Oh, any time now, Mr. Gillsleeve. We're just waiting for Mr. Farris. Yeah, Mr. Farris again. Well, I'm hungry enough to eat a horse. What are we having, Bertie? Oh, we're having calf's liver. Y have we come to that? And mashed potatoes. And fried eggplant. Fried eggplant. Yes. Sir. You know I can't stand eggplant, Bertie. It, it makes me break out. Yes, I know it, but Miss Marjorie said Mr. Ferris just dotes on eggplant. Well, I don't dote on Mr. Ferris. You can tell him that, whoever he is. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Excuse me now, Miss Gilsley. I got to see what's cooking. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let anything happen to that eggplant. Eggplant, sewing room. I don't know why we have a sewing room anyway. There hasn't been any sewing done in this house for 20 years. Uh, that you, Marjorie? Good evening, Uncle Moore. Listen, what's this thing all about? Say, you're really done up tonight, aren't you? <laughs> you like it? Yeah? I got it for the dance. It only costs $10 more than my allowance, especially reduced. Yes. Yeah. You haven't told me whether you like it. Well, you haven't given me a chance. <laughs> Turn around, my dear. <laughs> well? Marjorie, come kiss your dear old uncle. <laughs> Mm. You do like it, then. Honey, you look like a million dollars, specially reduced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad. There's only one thing. 
Uh, you don't think that dress is a little, uh... uh oh, uh, don't be old-fashioned, Uncle Mort. Uh, I'll bet probably every girl at the dance will be wearing a dress like this. Mm, maybe I'll change my mind and go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please do. It's going to be such fun. No, no, my dear. I've got to get my sleep. i got to be in the pink tomorrow. Oh, come on. No, you and Doug go ahead and have a good time. Oh, I'm not going to the dance with Doug. If you're not? No. Why not? Well, Doug and I have just had an understanding, that's all. You uh, mean you're not speaking? No, it's all perfectly friendly. Oh, brother, that's worse. <laughs> well, Ed, who is taking you to the dance? I'm going with Leroy. Leroy? You didn't buy that dress with all of us to go to the dance with Leroy. And another thing, since when does Leroy go to dances at night? I don't ever... Leroy? Oh, hello, Uncle. Come back here, young man. Yes, Uncle Mort. Where did you get that necktie? Uh, upstairs. No, I thought so. Suppose you take it right back upstairs. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, Uncle, can I go to the dance tonight? If, what do you mean, by the way? I mean, can I? Why do you ask me? You seem to be going. Oh, gee, thanks, Uncle. I'll sweep out the whole garage tomorrow. Well, see that you get back here by 10.30. Oh, okay. I'll sweep out the tool shed. <laughs> oh, say, I forgot to ask you how you came out in the tournament today, Uncle Moore. Oh, the tournament? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I... I played Judge Hooker in the finals tomorrow. Judge Hooker? Yeah. Well, the judge must have improved his game. No, uh, he's improved his handicap. I think they added in his age or a social security number or something. <laughs> oh, you can beat him. Uh, Why don't you come to the dance? After all, he's coming. I don't trust that old goat. He's just the type who would sneak home early and go to sleep. Besides, we got a good bet on this game. Two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to miss the best dance the club's ever had. That's right, Unc. And you know all the trouble we had over the band. Well, guess who we finally got? I don't know. Who? They got Bill Farris. No. Yes. Who's Bill Farris? Margie, tell them who Bill Farris is. He's a band leader. He plays the trumpet. It's... Just probably the greatest trumpet player in the world, that's all. Next to Maury Haynes. I never heard of him either. Oh, you have too, Uncle Mort. You know that record, I Don't Want to Walk Without You, Baby? I ought to. You played it night and day for three months. <laughs> well, that's Maury Haynes on the trumpet. Bill Farris plays a lot like him. Keep him away from here, then. Oh, don't be a Nicky, Uncle Moore. A Nicky. As a matter of fact, he happens to be coming here to dinner tonight. We're putting him up for the weekend. Oh, he's the one who's sleeping in my little bed, huh? Oh, we couldn't ask a guest to sleep on a cot. He's the gent who's ordering the meals around here now, huh? Bill Farris. I put up with a lot of things, my dear. But this is the first time I've ever had to play second fiddle to a cornet player. <laughs> Well, I'm curling up at the edges, too, Bertie. We've waited long enough for this star border of ours. Let's eat. Oh, I guess we'll have to. I told him 7 o'clock. There he is. That's him. I'll go, Bertie. Leroy, I'll go. Leroy. Oh, do let me go. Never mind looking in the mirror, Mark. The guy's waiting. Hiya, Sergeant. Hiya, hello. Well, hello. She hadn't seen him since 4 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Yes, I do. Well, I do. Sorry I'm late. I had to stop off to close the deal. Say, this isn't a bad little dump you got here. Yeah, thanks. Who's your fat friend? <laughs> Mort, Mort, uh, this is Mr. Farrell. Just call me Bill. And this is my uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hiya, Jack. Just call me Mister. He's a character, isn't he? Hey, hey, Mort. Oh, yes, and this is my little brother. Hiya, Slat. Uh, hi, Mr. Farris. You know something? What? I think you've got a swell band. I listen to you every time you're on the radio. Well, that hardly comes under the heading of news, bud. They all listen to me. You listen to any of the bands today, Eddie Francis, Goonie Myers, Maury Haynes, they all steal from me. Oh, yeah. but I love Maury Haynes, don't you? Maury Haynes, don't make me sick. What's that guy got? No talent? Nothing. Yeah. Well, I can blow more trumpet with my left ear than he can blow with his mouth. Maury Haynes. Well, I could have been right up where Maury Haynes is today, cleaning up. Then why aren't you? I'll tell you why, just to give you an idea of what you're up against in this business. Maury Haynes and I auditioned for the same radio program a while back. There's no question which is the better band, but it so happens that the sponsor's got a crotch on I Don't Want to Walk Without Your Baby. Well, I don't happen to have it in the books, Maury has. Oh, I love it, though. Well, I see i got to educate you, sugar. I wouldn't be caught playing that tune in a dog fight. Uh, what's the matter with it? It's a lot of corn. That guy, Haynes. If it wasn't for that broken-down ballad, where would he be today? Well, I... I rather like it. Well, the more joy. Oh, I don't want to. I think it's got something. <laughs> well, don't sing it around me, brother. I can't take it. Yeah. Excuse me, Miss Marjorie. Dinner's ready and then some. Oh, 
Do you mind if we sit right down, Mr. Ferris? I'm afraid we'll be late for the dance. Oh, I couldn't eat anything. Matter of fact, I got a little hungry, so I grabbed a bite on the way over. Oh, well, you don't mind if we grab a bite. After, <laughs> after waiting for you for an hour. Oh, go ahead, Jack. Eat your head off. Don't mind me. Uh, murder. <laughs> well, come on, gorgeous. You don't want to eat now. I got the car waiting outside. If you get hungry, we'll stop at a bean wagon. Oh, that would be fun. If Uncle Mort doesn't mind. No, he doesn't mind. <laughs> Coming, Leroy? Okay. Hey, will you give me a lesson on the puppet, Mr. Farris? I can blow a bugle. Well, some other time. Hey, don't stay up too late, Pop. Hey, Pop? Jump this bag in my room when you go upstairs, will you? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hooker, watch this drive now. Head down, wrist lock, left arm stiff, come back slow, and... <laughs> 1,700 yards right to the pin. <laughs> now we come to the water hole. Watch me drive this one across the sleepy lagoon. Even the sleepy lagoon. Where's all that racket? Did, what's going on out here? Oh, they must be back from the dance. This is a fine time for Sleepy Lagoon. I'll go down there and put that goon to sleep. Oh! He'll never get me in a folding cot again. <laughs> Where's that light switch? Oh, my poor little pinkies. Where's that door? It was here last night. Oh, oh, I'm in the sewing room, yeah. Oh, here it is. Quiet down there, quiet. All right, if I gotta go out there. Twice. Okay, son, blow your brains out. Uh, remember, take the second valve on that highway. <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> well, if it isn't fat, so. And yeah, where'd you get the night shirt? Yeah. Leroy, you skin right upstairs as fast as your little legs can carry you. I told you to be in bed by 10.30. Is it that late, Uncle? It's 2.30 and you know it. Look at your eyes. They're popping out. Now, get up there. Yes, Uncle. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Mort, if we disturbed you. My window is right over the porch here. Okay, I won't play anymore. Go climb into your snuggle bunny. <laughs> snuggle bunny. <laughs> Why don't you take that sour cornet and turn it in for scrap? It's fellas like you are holding up the war effort. <laughs> You better come up pretty soon, my dear. Right away, Uncle Mort. As soon as I turn out the light. Oh, what's your hurry? You can sleep any time. Now, let's park on the swing here and take a gander at the moon. Well, just for a minute. It's awfully late. Well, move over. Let's get acquainted. Well, I, uh, I really must go. Oh, nonsense. I don't come to town every day, you know. Say, I hope you're not one of those old-fashioned types. Well, no. Well, then move over. <laughs> Oh, that's better. <laughs> Take a look at that moon. You? you know, that moon was just made for you and me. You know, I really No, must... don't say anything. Don't spoil it. <laughs> nice out here, isn't it? Uh-huh. You know, with so many foods becoming scarce these days, we're lucky there's an abundance of cheese. Cheese is so tasty, satisfying, so nourishing, too. And it's mighty easy to add luscious cheese goodness to all kinds of dishes when you use Papstep, the delicious golden cheese food in the handy round flat package. You see, Papstep is just right for cooked cheese dishes because it melts so smoothly without stringing. Why, making a grand-tasting smooth cheese sauce with Papstep is easy as one, two, three. All you do is melt Papstep in a double boiler, stir in a little milk, and season. Mmm, there's a real cheese sauce for hot vegetables, fish and chicken dishes, macaroni, any number of foods. Of course, you'll want to serve Papstep, too, in sandwiches, salads, with fruit and pie. 
Altogether, there are over 100 delicious ways Papstet can glamorize your meals. That's a good thing because Papstet is so nutritious. It's an excellent energy food, rich in milk protein, and it gives you vitamin A and the important milk minerals, calcium and phosphorus. So you see, for many reasons, it's a good thing to have Papstet on hand. Stock up on Papstet tomorrow. Remember, Papstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. And now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. After a hard night in the sewing room, he comes down to breakfast with murder in his heart and circles under his eyes. Oh, what a night. I think I'll just have a poached egg this morning, Bertie. Yes, sir. Uncle Mort, I'm I'm sorry about last night. Really, I am. I tried to... Think nothing of it, my dear. Think nothing of it. What's a mere golf trophy trophy compared to one night of giddy pleasure? Oh, Uncle Mort. Oh, well, I guess I'll just give up the game. It would have been nice to win a cup, though. Just once before I die. Oh, Uncle Moore, don't talk like that. You're going to win. Anybody home? Oh, it's Judge Hooker. Come in, Judge. He always comes for breakfast. What does he want? I suppose he came over here to gloat. Oh, goat yourself. Morning, Marjorie. Why, Judge, what's the matter with your leg? Attack of gout. I've got it bad. Did you say gout? What'd you think I said? Can't you see it's killing me? Oh, Judgey, that's a shame. Yeah, something I ate. It kept me awake the whole night. (laughs) Well, that's too bad. Bertie, cancel that egg. I think I'll have some hotcakes and sausages. Yes, sir. What'd you say, do it, egg? Cancel it. Oh, shucks, I went and poached it. (laughs) Never mind, bring it on. I'll eat it anyway. Uh, Care to join me in an egg, Judge? No, thanks. Oh, it's too bad about your foot, Judge. That'll kind of spoil your game, won't it? Yes, I'm afraid we'll have to postpone the match, Throckmorton. What do you mean, postpone it? You either play it or forfeit it. Now, Gildy, you wouldn't want to win that cup by default. Well, it's tough luck, Judge. You wouldn't want people saying you took advantage of a fellow when he ate a lobster. You should have thought of that before you ate the lobster. Oh, have a heart, Gildy. You know I can't walk around that course. Hiya, Jackson. How's the kid? I'll just sleep. You've got the nerve to ask me that. Hiya, Judge. What's the argument? Well, maybe you can settle it for us. Know anything about golf? Oh, do I know anything about golf? Don't make me laugh. Well, I've got the gout. I can't play today, and Gildersleeve here claims I have to forfeit the match. Well, that's easy. I'll play it for you. If you? Oh, no, you won't. Why not, Gildy? It's better than a default. Oh, he's afraid, that's all. I am not afraid. I'll play this fellow if that's the way you want it. All right, Fatso, let's get going. Yes, sir. Mr. Ferris, this is our first tee. We're rather proud of this hole. Yes, it's 485 yards with a trap to the right of the green. (laughs) Better watch out for those woods at the left, too. Never mind the diagrams, Pop. Just show me the flag. Pop. Where's that driver? Keep your eyes peeled now. This one's going a long way. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Gee, that was a beaut, Bill. It must be 300 yards. 310. That's the longest drive in the history of this hole. It was just a lucky fluke, I hope. All right, Pop, I gave you something to shoot at there. Whip out the old pile driver and see if you can knock the ball off the tee. Don't worry about me, Ferris. I'll show you a drive. Hand me that club, Leroy. Here, Aaron. And, and give me a ball. Here. You better give me the good ball. Oh. <laughs> there. Now stand back, son. I've got a lot of things to remember here. Uh, head down, wrist locked, left arm stiff, and come back slow. <laughs> you uh, forgot one thing, Pop. You forgot to hit the ball. <laughs> Leroy, remember you're tattying for me. You laugh at my jokes. Watch this now. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I'll see you boys in the clubhouse after the first nine. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Latest results after eight holes of the final round match between Trump Morton P. Gildersleeve and Bill Paris, who is substituting for Judge Hooker. Gildersleeve is two down. Well, may the best man win. (laughs) 
No, my boy, this is the ninth hole. I'm taking no chances. I'm going to sight this putt very carefully. Come on, come on. All right, all right. One side, Leroy. Uh, take that pin out. Uh, quiet now. Uh, sighted putt sank, same. Uh, <laughs> Well, looks like I'm going to win this hole, Ferris. Not if I sink this 25-footer. It'll be a tie. Brother, if you sink that putt, I'll buy you a lunch. It's a deal. Hold your breath. Loose. Come on, Fatso. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> well, Ferris... Another piece of pie? No, not for me, Pops. Light lunch is best when you got another nine to play. Uh, light lunch, three pieces of pie. Well, maybe I guess you're right. Mr. Gildersleeve, can I show you some French pastry? Uh, no, thanks, Garçon. Light lunch today. Uh, you got it right there with you, though, haven't you? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that little chocolate house looks pretty good. <laughs> What's inside of that? Just a light filling, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, fine. You can give me the chocolate house. Uh, yes, sir. Which one? You might as well give me both of them. <laughs> Oh, hello, Judge. What do you want? I just wanted to make sure you're eating your head off as usual. Well, Mr. Ferris, you think you can beat him worse this afternoon than you did this morning? Oh, sure. I didn't have the feel of my clubs this morning. Hear that, Gildy? I ought to shoot better than 37 on a dinky little nine-hole course like this. Yeah. No, just a minute, Ferris. You can't come to Summerfield and knock our golf course. You're right, Gildy. Oh, well, take it easy, fellas. It's a cute little course. If you like croquet. Um, croquet, nothing. I'll have you know that Walter Hagen played this course, and he said it was wonderful. The Hag said that? Yes. He said, I've never played on anything like it in my life. <laughs> Those were his exact words. They sounded better even when he said them. Well, I still say if this is a good course, I'm Bobby Jones. Well, you listen to me, Jones. Oh, uh, Ferris. I'm just sore enough to make you eat those words. I'm two down to you on the first nine, right? I'll bet you $50 that I win this match. Did I say that? Fifty dollars? Hey, Uncle, you off your stick? Yeah, I must be. No, by golly, I said fifty dollars and I'm going to stick to it. What about it, Paris? It's a bet, Pop. I never hope to make fifty bucks any easier. Come on. It, uh, wait till I eat this last roof. Hey, Uncle Mort, here comes Marge. Maybe she'll bring you luck. If quietly, Roy. Ferris is about to drive. How's oh, it going, Leroy? Uncle Mort just bent his shirt, and it's already hanging out. <laughs> Never mind that shirt. Give me that driver. All right. Head down now. Left arm stiff. Oh, nuts to that. Slam it. <laughs> Wonderful, Uncle Mort. Wonderful. I needed food. That's all I needed. Food. <laughs> something, Unc. I think Paris has been cheating on the last two holes. Cheating? Oh, no, my boy. He wouldn't do a thing like that. Still, he's a cornet player. <laughs> yeah, I know for a fact he forgot to count a couple of his shots. He did? Why, that's terrible. Hurry up, Fatso. So let's get this over with. All right, all right. Go ahead. It's your shot. Uh, give me that club. <laughs> ah, there. Right smack on the green. Pop that butterball. Yeah, butterball. Now, now don't let him get you going, Unc. Here's your club. Yeah, all right, my boy. Here goes. <coughs> Look out! <coughs> now, see here, you deliberately did that to make me miss. I did not. I was talking to my caddy. If you weren't such a little fellow, I'd knock the suffings out of you. I mean, if you weren't such a big fellow. <laughs> Quit squawking. Let's get going. Uh, move over, Leroy. Okay, Unc. Don't worry. I know a way to fix him. What's that? It, never mind. Let me shoot first. Uh, Gosh, Junk, you're only six inches from the pin. Yeah, come on, Leroy, Marjorie, we'll win this thing yet. 
What were you saying, Leroy? If he's going to cheat, we can take care of him. Oh, now, nothing unsporting, my boy. Can't have anything like that. Are you sure it'll work? <laughs> Don't you worry, Uncle Mort. Just leave it to me. Yeah. Well, Pop, looks like you'll be home in five, but if I make this putt, I'm down in three and the match is over. Yeah, I can't deny it, Ferris. It's only a six-foot putt. Uh, Want to concede it? Concede? Frockmorton P. Gildersleeve concede? Never. There's a principal involved. What principal, Long? Fifty bucks. <laughs> That's the spirit, Uncle Mort. Well, have it your way, kids. The cup means nothing to me, but all that cash. <laughs> Hand me my putter, Sam. Do it now, Leroy. Now. Okay. I don't want to walk yeah. without yeah, yeah. you. Quiet. I told you I can't stand that song. Quiet. The boy is just musically inclined. <laughs> Go right ahead and putt. Uh, darn kid. Nope. <laughs> All right, I missed it. But if I sink this one, I still win. Oh, yes, I can still lose. Go ahead. I don't want to walk with a house. Listen, I told you I don't like that song. Now cut it out. Sink the pot, sink the pot. Okay. I don't want to walk. <laughs> Another miss. Say, Paris, if you miss once more, maybe I'll win. Don't huh? worry. Watch this one. Yeah. That's no fair. I didn't make a sound. No, but I thought you were going to. <laughs> Say, if I make this putt, I win, don't I? Oh, quiet now. <laughs> you victory. Oh, come on, Mr. Remedy. Oh, oh, by golly, Throckmorton, I'm glad you won. It was worth $2 to see you beat that stuck-up trumpet player. Horace, you're a pal. Come on, let's get up there to that 19th hole, huh? I, I don't want to golf without you. you. No, no sir. How do you like my trophy, Bertie? My, it sure looks handsome up there, Mr. Gillsleeve. Just what the mantle needed. But I thought they were going to give you a cup. Well, none of the clubs are giving cups anymore, Bertie. The government needs the medal for scrap. But this is a very valuable Ming vase. It's gorgeous, all right. Yeah, you should have seen how I want it, Bertie. I was lying about 50 feet from the hole, you see? Yes. <laughs> Here, give me that club. All right. Yeah, thank you. I'll show you. I took my trusty number five iron. I swung it easy like this. Oh, good night, everybody. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Frank Bingman speaking for the makers of Packset and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Have you discovered the speedy way to make swell macaroni and cheese? These days, clever women make that favorite dish without any fuss of grating cheese, without any bother with blanching and baking the macaroni. They simply open up a package of the product called Kraft Dinner. They cook the special Kraft Dinner macaroni quickly in boiling water, and with a Kraft grated, which also comes in each Kraft Dinner package, they sprinkle the cheese flavor through and through. Presto, the dinner main dish is ready in only seven minutes cooking time. But the best part of it is, Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese is extra special good. Fluffy, light, and drenched in cheese flavor. When good cooks discover this seven-minute way of making macaroni and cheese... They say never again to the old-fashioned slow method. And Kraft Dinner is a money saver as well as a time saver. So tomorrow when you're shopping, get ready for quick, tempting main dishes of macaroni and cheese. Ask your dealer for Kraft Dinner. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.